Blizzard cooked up some huge changes last week, so it's time to predict what might be bait and what might actually be sleeper OP. If you're looking to play something new, remember that WoW PvP is honestly a lot like cooking, but you don't want to be that guy getting flamed every lobby for doing zero damage. If you're sick of being hard stuck in Hell's Kitchen, we've rolled out brand new courses for the War Within at skillcap.com. Every course is designed to get you the rating you deserve by teaching the fundamentals that actually carry, like damage rotation burst sequences, openers, and more. And no matter what, we will back you up with a rating gain guarantee where we promise that you will see rating gains while actively using our website. So after this video, be sure to click the link below for an exclusive discount to get started. For now, back to the tier list. We'll kick things off with every change to melee DPS. First up on the chopping block was Unholy Death Knight, who aside from getting some rather less relevant hero talent changes, also saw flat damage nerfs to dots and single target burst, which amounts to a 6-9% to damage nerf overall. Haha, <laughs> nice. Anyway, last time we had Unholy ranked pretty high, and we think it already had a pretty sizable lead over some melee, and if anything, this simply closes the gap just a little bit more. Demon Hunter, on the other hand, has definitely been a spec in need of some juicy buffs, as right now it is one of the least represented specs above 1800. Blizzard responded with two sets of buffs, one targeting hero talents and some small damage increases specifically for PvP. Now, before you get too excited, we don't think this changes their ranking by much. Right now, what DH needs the most is the ability to kill inside stun windows. Those big I-beam setups need to feel scary again before we decide to move DH above the A tier, and if anything, these changes simply reinforce our previous rankings. Feral Druid is where things get a bit interesting, because on one hand, their ferocious bite burst is seeing a slight nerf, but on the other hand, they're actually getting some buffs to their AoE damage. Now, not to spoil anything, but Demonology could be on the rise this week, and Feral Druid is one of those specs that loves seeing more nameplates on its screen. And now, with the melee meta shifting, we actually think Feral might be one of the best, if not the best overall melee in the game for Solo Shuffle, so it will be moving up our ranks. Moving on, Survival is seeing a mix of changes. Across the board, all Hunter specs are getting some defensive nerfs to Survival of the Fittest and Survival Tactics, along with a Hero Talent nerf which affects both Marks and BM. Before you get too sad, Blizzard was nice enough to sprinkle in some tier set buffs to Survival as a little treat for our friend Bikmex. Overall though, we think these changes are power neutral to some degree, trading out some defensive strength for more damage. Fane Death was arguably one of the most broken defensives in the game and was bound for some nerfs anyway. Next up is Rhett Paladin, who will be the hardest to predict this week, as it got an Amazon Prime overnight delivery box full of buffs to the Templar Hero spec, which it hasn't really touched at all so far this season. For the uninitiated, Templar is the more burst-centric build, and to this point, Rhett's were definitely lacking finishing power in Arena. We could see these buffs go one of two ways, either everyone jumps ship and plays the new hero spec, or nothing happens at all. By all accounts, Rhett is going to be a true wildcard. Moving on to Rogues, Assassination is getting some tier buffs right in time for everyone to equip their 4 set, and Outlaw is getting some flat damage increases for the second time in a row. Despite all of this, we won't be moving either spec around on our tier list. Buffs to some of the other specs this week make these changes power neutral for Assassination, and Outlaw is just a bit too complicated for most players, and is still outperformed by Sub in every way possible. Warriors are seeing some of the biggest changes this week, with a class-wide buff on defensive stance, and some rebalancing of hero talents, which actually could mean some new builds in the near future. But the biggest news that everyone was waiting for was actually the buff to Arms Warrior. Most importantly, Arms is getting a buff to Mortal Strike and Execute, and the last time this happened, Warrior mains immediately jumped ship from Fury, but here's the thing, Fury is also getting some tier set buffs, after already having a pretty sizable lead in the head-to-head, -head. so what does this mean? This might seem like a hot take, but Fury might still be the best warrior spec even if the gap is closing. For the meantime, we'll be moving arms up to the A tier, but it could wind up being higher. The spec was getting outperformed so hard that the changes might not have had the impact people were expecting, and what remains to be seen is how big of an effect the hero talent changes will have. There was a period of time on the beta where Colossus Warrior was hitting super hard with Demolish. Regardless though, it's a good week to be a warrior. That brings us to our predictions for the melee meta this week, which really hasn't changed much except for Arms Warrior. We still have lots of questions about Rhett Paladin and will be a true wild card to monitor. For those of you sub to our website, we already have some Templar burst sequences to check out just in case hero builds change. Now though, let's move on to range DPS, where there will be some pretty big shifts. First up, we need to remember that hunters are getting some defensive nerfs across the board. Both the survival tactics, which is that massive 90% shield wall they proc by using feign death, 
and Survival of the Fittest, their actual shield wall that conveniently has two charges. Marks and BM are getting a double whammy by also seeing a nerf to Smokescreen, which is that nifty talent that combines two defensives into one. While these nerfs seem minor, they could start a butterfly effect for the meta. Worse defensives means it's harder to stay in, which means doing less damage and possibly even landing less CC, at least on paper. We don't think Mark's Hunter will be completely frail now, but we do think these nerfs are enough to bump it down at least half a tier. Beast Mastery, on the other hand, is getting a mix of damage buffs and nerfs at the same time, which has caused a bit of confusion, but let's do some math. Basilisk Collar is getting nerfed by 60%. Before, with 6 dots on the target, it gave hunters a 60% damage increase with their pets. But now, with 6 dots, it's down to a 24% damage increase, which is a pretty substantial damage loss. Blizzard then threw a curveball into the mix with some super last minute damage buffs, which actually partially offset these nerfs. Overall though, you can expect BM Hunter damage to feel slightly lower this week. Moving on, we have Mages, which are seeing some pretty big damage buffs across the board, with two specs moving up. Unfortunately, Arcane is not one of them, despite the fact that it is getting some damage buffs for the second week in a row to both Missiles and Orb. These are definitely changes in the right direction, but Arcane still feels like an outdated spec at this point, being way too reliant on hardcasting damage in a meta of micro CCs. Fire is where things really start to heat up, as it's getting some of the biggest damage buffs we've ever seen, with one in particular being Sleeper OP, and it's actually the buff to Scorch of all things. That's because Fire Mages have a talent which essentially allows Scorch to act as an execute, hitting 300% harder on low HP targets, which might seem a bit awkward to use until you realize they have another talent that causes Scorch to be instant cast while benefiting from its execute modifier. Ironically, this makes it their hardest hitting ability. Weird, but kinda neat. Glass Cannon is also getting a bigger health penalty, which kind of sucks, but might not be that big of a deal into anything that isn't a Marks Hunter. Overall though, we think Fire's net damage increases are enough to raise it by two tiers, where it will join a cast of heavy hitters. Frost Mages are seeing some pretty significant buffs too, but this time to Frost Fire Bolt and some other talents on its hero tree, which we think will help round out its damage profile. Even after Ice Lance nerfs, Frost Mages didn't have a big incentive to open up their cast bar, but these changes could make Frost turn into a Frost Bolt turret once again. And with the nerfs to Hunters and buffs to Warriors, the meta is looking prime for Frost Mage, who we are moving up to the S tier, but this time they won't be alone because now they are getting joined by Shadow Priest of all things, who also got a huge shipment of damage buffs to the increasingly popular Void Weaver tree. As it turns out, Shadow Priest might have been sleeper OP this whole time, because if we look at log data, it actually has one of the highest win rates in the entire game up to 1800. Regardless of what the data says, Shadow is getting some pretty huge buffs to many of its main spells like VT, Shadow Word Pain, Void Bolt, and even Shadowy Apparitions. As a result, we will be moving it all the way up to the S tier for the first time in a while. The coolest spec in WoW might now be one of the best. We know you might be excited about Warlock, but we need to take a quick detour to Elemental Shaman, who is getting a buff to healing Stream Totem and casted damage, but when's the last time you actually saw a Shaman actually cast Lightning Bolt? Anyway, Ellie was already A tier and we don't expect much to change. For you Warlock fans out there, we have some good news. You and your pet are now tankier, thanks to buffs Demon Skin and Demonic Resilience. Hopefully now your pet won't randomly die and you won't soak melee damage like a level 60 target dummy. But now we have some bad news, at least for some of you. Affliction is seeing some pretty big damage nerfs, specifically to its win condition, where Shadow Bolt and Dark Glare talents are hitting the chopping block. As a result, Affliction will actually move down half a tier. Quite shocking, we know. Even though Warlocks will be tankier overall, taking a hit to your win condition never feels good, especially in solo shuffle. And with major buffs to other high tier DPS, Affliction will not feel as dominant. Demonology Warlocks, on the other hand, have a few reasons to be excited. We know you've been baited by buffs for multiple weeks in a row, but Tuesday's changes might finally be what Demo needs to bounce back, as Pet Damage and Demon Bolt have been buffed once more. And in case you missed it, Demo got some bug fixes last week too, which passively buffed Pet Damage. Demo is probably the biggest winner from the Warlock defensive buffs, since it is the spec that needs to hard cast the most. While it might still suffer some skill creep problems and issues with Tyrant AI, we are predicting that Demonology will rise up to the A tier for this week. That brings us to our updated range tier list where a lot has changed. Shadow Priest might actually be the best caster in the game, and with the Hunter nerfs and Warrior buffs, Frost Mage stocks are definitely on the rise. But what about healers? They're seeing some changes too, right? Is Disc Priest finally going to fall from its throne? 
Not exactly, but let's break things down. Resto Druid is getting three separate buffs, a big 40% increase to Scenarian Ward, along with a buff to Tranquility, but most importantly, a buff to Mana Regeneration, which is where Druid actually suffers quite a bit. These changes aren't going to be monumental, but definitely help. Even though a 40% buff to Scenarian Ward might seem massive, it's such a small part of Resto Druid healing anyway. Druids are going to feel a bit better this week, but definitely not broken and won't be moving anywhere on our tier list. Mistweaver is getting some weird changes this week, as its alternate hero spec is getting three separate buffs. When we asked Mystical about this, he seemed pretty happy, but Monk probably won't be seeing any dramatic shifts on any tier list. The spec is still a bit more fundamentally flawed than anything else, without strong damage mitigations and with a very long healing ramp, which could be solved by going Master of Harmony, but overall Mistweaver is just a bit outdated. Just like Resto Druid, it will feel better this week, but probably not by much. Holy Paladin is also getting some buffs to its alternative hero spec too, but we think Holy Paladin was already in a position to be S tier. Going back to the data, Holy Paladin's had the highest win rate out of any healer up to 1800. So for many players, Holy Paladin was already one of the best healers. Last time we bumped it up to A+, but now we think it could be top dog. The final healer to see buffs this week was Resto Shaman, who got a class-wide buff to Healing Stream, along with some buffs to Casted Heals. We sound like a broken record at this point, but we don't think this will change its power level by much. Shaman might have had a small showing in the recent AWC, but it is still outclassed by both Disc Priest and Holy Paladin. Healing buffs will help close the gap slightly, but not completely. That brings us to our updated healer tier list for Season 1, and we know we didn't mention preservation moving down, so let's quickly explain. In recent weeks, Preservation of Okra has dipped down in popularity after some nerfs in the early season. And if we look at log data, it has the second lowest win rate for players up to rival ratings. Its skill floor continues to be a barrier for many players. This is a problem with making any PvP tier list. Some specs are just harder to learn, which can make them unviable for 90% of players. But that's why our class courses are so insanely OP, because they teach the fundamentals needed to actually reach your potential in easy to follow guides you won't find anywhere else. Skill Capped is our name for a reason. We have almost 15 years of experience teaching WoW PvP to over half a million players, helping them reach their rating goals season after season faster than the competition. You don't have to be scared to sign up because we have a rank up guarantee that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. So if you're serious about climbing, visit the discount link below to get started. Anyway guys, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.